you have to know who you are, you know, before you you step into like a serious relationship, you know, because if you really want to create a, a, a pathway for a woman as a man, you got to show her where you're going. That's it. You got to show her. And, and that, back then it didn't work because I believe I was in that position to show her. Good, good. That's good self-awareness. And then you came with her. What made you want to do that so soon? Give her the plan so soon. On the first day. Yeah, on the first day. Literally, I was, we had been vibing for about three weeks. I knew where we were in a relationship. You know, when when I prayed to God, um, you know, you know, God, who is this woman to me? You know, this is how I'm feeling. I yeah. brought my feelings, my desire, my emotions. I said, God, you gotta show me, you know, and and then he gave it to me on the fast. You know, he said, This is my daughter. He said, I want you to protect her, honor her, and love her. And from that moment, I walked away from that fast. Like, you know, she went from me pursuing her to her actually becoming my assignment. I never imagined my public healing would inspire others to heal across the world. I thank you for using him to reach the world with a message of hope in relationships. But your life does not. God, you are my publicist. We laugh. <laughs> We share the unadulterated truth. He said, not only have I not divorced you, I ain't exposed you. Oh. We didn't marry fans, we married forever. And we wanted forever to act like a fan. Reveal her, Jesus. I will not compromise mm -mm. on getting a woman to God. You don't have to. And Father, I declare for his future wifey, thank you for preserving her. This season, I declare miracles and manifestations. See, you're selling scripts. And you're unique. You ain't like nobody else. I, I noticed that right away. You being true to who you are, you're going to attract. Mm. It's a Hebrew word, chayil, and it was translated wealth. And it means people, it means men, it means resources, and it means means. I'm Lateris R. Whitfield, and this is the Dear Future Wifey Podcast. Welcome to the Dear Future Wifey Podcast. I'm your host, Latera Star Whitfield. Listen, are you still shacking up with us? If you're still shacking up with us, go ahead and hit that subscription button and subscribe. Make sure you turn on your notification bell so you'll be notified about upcoming episodes. Man, season six has been rocking, and I thank all of y'all for supporting. If you're listening to us on streaming platforms, make sure you leave a review. Uh, rate it five stars leave a comment so other people can be notified about the these you know just be notified that the podcast exists through the wonderful algorithms um, but listen we are number one in a lot of countries across the world we're number four on apple Podcasts, in the united states so thank y'all so much for helping the dear future wifey podcast to consistently rank top 10 on apple Podcasts. this couple that we have today you know, certain people that come across my feed that I say, you know, I got to have them. Why? It's because I believe that what God is going to do for me in this journey of love, that he spoke a word in my life a couple of years ago where he said it will happen suddenly. And this couple, y'all have heard me say that a lot, that, that when God brings the right person in your life, it happens suddenly. There ain't no time to be waiting and procrastinating and trying to figure it out. God already did, it, did that for you. And he prepared you for such a time as this. So without further ado, welcome to the Dear Future Wifey podcast. My new homies, Stefan and Iman Alfred. How y'all doing? Good. It's so good, Thank man. Look at y'all all cuddled up or whatever. Great, like, great to be here. Like, good <laughs> Lord, y'all can like, you can't, you can't spread apart a little bit. You got to be all booed up. Look at it. This that's how y'all are. This, this, this the new norm. It's the new norm. <laughs> so what is this? God remember. What is that about? Yeah. So um, actually, it was inspired uh, by a post. The the first post that I posted about Iman. Um, you know, I'm not one to post. You know, anything regarding any relationships. But when I knew that she was the one, I literally posted her. And I said that a hashtag got remembered. Mm -hmm. So I have been waiting. <sighs> when I tell you I've been waiting for this moment, for this season, and it's a beautiful thing when it shows up in the flesh. And Iman is someone I'm very, very honored to call wife. And so when I say God remembered, it is a movement. You know, it's a movement to inspire people to let them know that if God remembered us, he will certainly rem remember you. That's what I'm talking about. He doesn't have no respect of person. Yeah. You know, it's just a lot of things we all have to dig through internally, externally, whatever it is. But it's 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 a movement happening. 
You know what? As I've been thinking about the name of this episode, I was going to mess with your mind and call it just like that. Um. But um, I'm going to leave that for her and her. Uh, that, that's what you have with your your godmother. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So like I'm, I'm gonna let y'all protect that. Okay. I'm gonna call it um, miracle of love. Mm. Miracle of love. Because when I started hearing about y'all's your journey and how and we're gonna get into it, so I'm not even gonna, I'm not even gonna mess up the story. I want y'all to tell it because <laughs> I love how uh, I just I just love hearing y'all's story. So wow. we're gonna go ahead and go all the way back. Mm-hmm. No, first we're gonna start here. How long y'all been married? <laughs> How many days, babe? <laughs> you been counting the days? No, no, I haven't, I haven't been counting the days. Well, we got married October 28th. Yes. No, October 29th. 29th, 29th. I'm sorry. October 29th. 29th. You got, got engaged, engaged on October the 20th. 28th. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So before they say that, they're going to be like, how that, how that makes sense? Here we go. Y'all met on social media what month? It was May. May 14th. May the 14th. Mm -hmm. Take us back there. What happened? I want to go first from what state you were in Mm -hmm. when you received this DM, and then I want to go back to what state he was in. So you you, you woke up one morning, and what happened? Yeah, so May 14th, I was staying in Memphis, Tennessee. Um, That's my hometown. And prior to, I was praying, asking God for my husband a few hours before he DM'd me. And so when I wake up, I see his DM. And, you know, Instagram, typically the DMs come to your request. But this time, it was directly on my phone. Like, when I woke up, I saw his message on my screen instead of, like, in the request folder. So I was shook. I'm like, okay, who is this man? (laughs) (laughs) So you said the night before, you had prayed what? I was praying for my husband hours before. So probably, like, six hours before. I was just up walking the floor in my mom's home, and I was praying to God for my husband. So, so we, so we've heard about the Sierra prayer. Now we got to talk about the mom <laughs> prayer. prayer. The mom prayer. Mom <laughs> prayer. And, and you said that you were walking the floor. Yeah, the hallway in my so, mom's so home. So, so what made that moment? What what happened in that moment for you to be so intentional that night to be? What was going on? Um, I just my spirit. I just. I just had so much faith because I talked to my godmother that week and she declared over me that I was going to meet my husband and it was going to happen just like that. So in that moment, my faith was activated. And so I just I didn't forget that conversation with her. And I'm like, God, it's time. So I just start praying. So I got up and I just declaring those things that were not as though they were. And I just started speaking, God, you know, I'm believing for you to send my husband. And I'm declaring that it's going to happen just like that because I just believe that you're going to do it. That word was released. So now I'm in faith for it. And I woke up (laughs) and he DM'd me. (laughs) (laughs) Slid. Slid. He's he's like a baseball player. He just slid right Right on on in there. there. Slid right right on into Mm -hmm. home base. So what happened? So where were you at mentally that sent? That message to her DM. What were you? What were you thinking? Yeah. So if I could scroll back to December of the of the previous year, I had prayed up before God. I said, God, help me to identify who my wife is. Help me to identify who my <laughs> wife is. That is the most imperative thing to actually pray. Yeah. Because you can meet a lot of women, but that don't mean that. I always say I meet a lot of wives. Right. Mm. But they're not mine. That's it. That's powerful. See, That's a lot great. of women don't understand that. That just because a man doesn't choose you doesn't mean that you're not a wife. You're just not his. Mm -hmm. And you can be solid, an amazing woman. But what he said is that, yeah, I mean, you know, especially in the church, when you get intentional and you start drawing great quality women to you, Mm -hmm. it's imperative to be able to discern that which is yours and that which is not. Mm -hmm. That's so true. Yep. So I prayed that prayer and... You know, I had no idea that uh, it would be this upcoming year, the following year, uh, because I was in a place uh, mentally where I was trying to build. I was in building mode. You know, I just recently closed on a a, a multi-unit building, trying to, to finish it up, you know, so I can turn it to a place to house the underserved. Mm. And so I had already been like in this mode. I had closed in February and it was like a couple of days before my birthday. And um, a few days after I got into a really bad accident. So it had been like a test, you know, from that point. 
And once I, um, in this season, uh, uh, like May, when May came, I don't know what it was, but it was something that hit me. It was a Saturday morning. It was May 14th at 8.34 a.m. And I remember the time because I remember like it was yesterday. I woke up and I knew I had, I'm a realtor and I'm a licensed realtor in Illinois. I knew I had um, an open house that day. So I don't know what possessed me to, to get up and start, you know, seeking, but I knew it was the Holy Spirit. Really? You know, I really did because it was such an urgency. And when you become urgent about something, you got to listen. Yeah. You know, and that's what I felt in that moment just to get on Instagram and search out, you know, my future wife. And then I'm, I'm typing no, in. No, what did you say? <laughs> this is hilarious. What did you search? What was your search keywords? <laughs> I'm typing in hashtag virtuous woman. Proverbs I'm typing 31. in Proverbs, Proverbs 31, 31 woman. That's what killed me. I'm that killed me. Proverbs 31. I said, this joker said, he said, I'm going to get real biblical. Proverbs 31. <laughs> yeah. I did. I did. I was very intentional. Did you ever put that as a hashtag? And never. Yeah. I don't use hashtags. <laughs> that, and I'm going to tell you that that's what's the miracle. Yeah. That's the miracle. That's, that's what I'm that's saying. That's the miracle. It's, it's mind boggling because... From that moment, we look back and say the algorithms had changed in our favor, and it was God's doing. You know, it was it was a miracle to happen. You put hashtag Proverbs thirty one. Yeah. Hashtag yeah, I, I was seeking, but that was the, that was my position. That's where I was mentally. I was actually searching, mm. and you know, the Bible says, "Seeking ye shall find." Yeah, don't stop yeah. seeking. Yeah, so that's what inspired me was just to just to search. And I landed on her page, and it just, it was over. This is interesting. How many people did you f go through before you hit her page? Before I sent her a message? Yeah. Like, the, were you seeing other women that you was like, oh, she kind of cute. Uh, you know, let me DM her. <laughs> let me DM. Let me DM I was. This. I was. I was looking at it. Not it. And I was, I was scrolling. <laughs> not it. <laughs> and, and I literally was, you know, because... A man knows yeah, you, what, you, what meets his true desire. Yes. You can't paint the picture for the man. You, you have to already be it. So a lot of women try to, to dress this and they try to do this. Show this, and reveal they try to that. Show this, reveal that. No, just be yourself and the right man will find you. I say it all the time. I say men should pursue and not persuade and a woman should present hmm. and not pursue. Yeah. And all she's doing is just presenting. Just be be who you are, yeah. and you will always draw that which yes. you desire. If you find that you're drawing the wrong thing, then that means that whatever you're presenting is something right. wrong. It's, mm -hmm. it's advertising. I've been in advertising all my life. And right. so at the end of the day, that we create billboards mm -hmm. and commercials to draw a certain audience. Mm -hmm. If your audience, you're drawing dudes that are pants sagging all the time and smoking weed all the time and all that, what are you advertising at the end of the day? What are yeah. you entertaining in that moment? And then you need to start fine-tuning some things but women mm -hmm. should present and so what drew you to her honestly when i first came to her page yeah the light want you keep it real off, you know she was fine yeah and keep she it real still is fine yeah so when i, I, I want to talk about i saw the holy spirit now nah, you saw I she was fine no no nah, nah, I, didn't, I didn't even know she had the holy spirit at that point <laughs> i honestly didn't you know i looked at her page and i'm like Woo, I, I, gotta, I gotta send her a message like you know, and I had been scrolling, looking. She didn't have a lot of photos. She probably had like 20-something photos from what I remember. He said they counted all of them, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, I, and I didn't like them. You know, some, some people try Start to like the like game. Them. You know, like, I'm going to see if they're going to like me back. It wasn't none of that. It was just a straight DM after I, I had got done looking at her profile. I looked at her stories. Like, she had some saved stories that was on her page. And I really looked at... Um, which stood out to me was not only her beauty, but her family values. Mm -hmm. So she, and this is why I always say, like, she set some booby traps for me. Mm -hmm. I did, because <laughs> I told my mom, I said, I feel like I'm, my husband is going to find me through social media. This was years ago. And uh, when I was with my family, I'm like, I needed to record y'all because my husband going to like this. <laughs> <laughs> you said that for real? I really did. You said my husband going to like this? He's Because I, I wanted a family me. man. So I needed him to see that side of me. The Lord kind of put that in my spirit back in 2020 because I was off social media for like five years and I just felt led to get back on social media, <laughs> which is crazy. That's how we know it's a miracle and it's God's doing because I had no intention of ever getting back on social media. And you were literally recording videos talking about yeah, my, my, my future husband. I was husband like, Mom, get like right here, get right here. <laughs> 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 he needs to see what we got going on. Yeah. <laughs> And I, I saw that interaction. I saw them like celebrating each other. They were dancing. I remember they were celebrating um, your sis, my new sis, 
uh, when she had got accepted to college. And it was just this video of just like them running around to celebrate. I'm like, it's something different about them. You felt drawn to You know, them. I felt, it felt uh, normal. It yeah. felt like it was something I was already accustomed to. So yeah. that's what inspired me to slide in. Yeah. And what was that DM? It was a long one. Yeah, it was. <laughs> what do you say? It, it was something along the lines like, hey, um, you know, I know this may catch you off guard, um, but that's sometimes how life works. Um, and, I, and I said, I, I checked out your profile and uh, some things stood out that I would like to have a discussion about or something along those lines. Mm-hmm. And then there was a, probably a few more sentences. You let me know that you are a man <laughs> that's very intentional. Yeah. Yeah. I remember saying yeah. that. I did a... Um, was that on my live? I say, I say this often. I said, men, we'll go look at your social media. Mm-hmm. And I said, I said, especially me, if a woman's interested in me, just come to my DMs, say something that you saw on my podcast or something, a post that I made, uh, talk about that or whatnot. I'm going to mm-hmm. go through your, your, your account. I'm going to look and see what you're posting about, seeing if you're turning up most of the time in the pictures and popping bottles and all that stuff, and I'm not attracted to that. Mm-hmm. And so if mm-hmm. I see that there's some alignment, I go, okay, I hear what she's talking about. She has substance. She's talking about some stuff that's aligned with me. Mm-hmm. Then I'm going to respond back. And I'll be like, hey, I noticed on your page you talk about this, this, this. I really like that. Where did you learn that from? Or whatever that that mm-hmm. subject matter is. And that's what brings the organic conversation. Mm-hmm. So I love the fact that proof perfect. You went and looked at her stuff. You went and looked through her stories. You went and looked through all that stuff. And you started feeling a drawing towards her based upon your alignment with her. Um, and then so when you saw that, you felt that he was intentional. And what else did you feel? I thought that he was very bold and crazy. <laughs> I'm like, you don't know me, and you're sending me this long paragraph, and you're letting Which me. Which you read? You read the whole thing? I read the whole thing. <laughs> but I can't believe you sent this long thing. <laughs> Girl, let me tell you what you done wrote me. <laughs> I had to give her a lot to digest. <laughs> <laughs> Let that thing marinate. Let it marinate. <laughs> marinate because, you know, still in the back of my mind, I know what just happened prior before, how I just prayed and asked God for my husband. And he's telling me that he's ten- he's intentional and that he's so happy um, that he found my page, that he discovered me. So it was like little words that made me feel like, okay, God, is this you? So... Because <laughs> this, this, it always gets me emotional. So, so you looked at it. Then what happened? You went and looked at his page, and then what? I looked at his page, and I called my girlfriend, my best friend. I'm like, girl, this man sending me this long DM, and I told her uh, what happened with my god mom. How I was praying the night before, and I told her what my um, god mom declared over me that was gonna happen just like that. So she's like, let me see him. So we start doing our research. What what, what, what did your friend say when she saw his page? She was like, you need to respond to him. No, I did. did so, Immediately. So she didn't say, oh, he cute. He fine. Oh, yeah. She said yeah, he's I, very I, handsome. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> you gotta get, get, we got we to keep it real. <laughs> she was like, he is so handsome. Like, did you respond? I'm like, no, because I don't know him. He's in Chicago. <laughs> Shout out to Indy. And- <laughs> <laughs> For the plug. She's yeah, the plug. Right, right. Yes. So we're doing our research, and she's like, you need to respond to him. What made her say that? She just felt it. She told me that we were going to get married that year. She told me we were going to get married. You talking about from that? Po- from you, that, yes. That moment. That she, moment. She, she automatically saw y'all married. She did. She had never, ever said this about anyone before. <laughs> so I'm like, you are crazy just like he crazy. <laughs> <laughs> y'all both crazy. Y'all, y'all need to be with crazy. each other. Y'all need to be <laughs> crazy. Crazy. <laughs> crazy. I'm like, are you serious? She said, that's your husband. She it's said, only crazy until it happens. That's Mike it. Todd. That's it. Mike yeah. Todd. Yeah. 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 Part, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's it. She said, y'all probably going to be married by September. And we got actually got married in October. This girl said that. <laughs> My best friend told me that. She said it's something different about him. She said, um, "You ain't had not one conversation with this man." I was like, "I can get you off my phone." <laughs> so I rushed her off the phone, and she kept checking, like, "Did you talk to him?" Mm-mm, I did it because I had no intention of responding. So why? I don't, I don't know. I so, think because so he was you, in Chicago. So you, so you don't normally respond to guys in your DM? I do, but it didn't get me anywhere. So. <laughs> 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 I think she was at a place where she was still overcoming trauma. Yeah. 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 I was. Yeah. So. Oh yeah, we're gonna talk about that too. Yeah. About about some of the 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 jokers that you 
the court gestures that you dated along the way, mm-hmm. and uh, which is interesting because when you start meeting the real one, he has to pay the penalty for all the guys that mismanaged you before. Come on, that's man. true. That's so real. That's true. But God fashions the main one, the real one, the true one. Mm-hmm. He fashions him where he's capable of handling all the mishandlings that you've dealt with prior to him. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's and, true. And, that's right. and he doesn't take it personally. He'd be like, okay, this is the process before the promise. I got you, boo. Yeah. I know mm-hmm. I know you may not be able to see me as, I know you may feel like I'm the same as these other people, but time will tell. Time and, will that's tell. What, and that's what my boy that's Stefan it. did. Yeah. He said, he said I'm, I'm going to show you better than I can tell you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, me. yeah. All these other people was talking about uh, marrying you, but I'm gonna I'm, I'm I'm show you. Yeah, I'm gonna marry you, you. <laughs> just like that. Just like that. Suddenly. And so, exactly. So then, what made you finally? How long did it take for you to finally respond to the DM? So that was at eight. I saw it immediately. I didn't <laughs> respond hours. to one. <laughs> Four hours. It's still. Here. I had to get myself together. I'm like, God, are we? Am I really about to get back out there? And how long had you not been out there? Um, let's see. Four months. Four months. So I'm like, okay, like I finally became, like I got back healed. I reached a, a place of wholeness, and now I'm, I'm have faith again. But now I'm nervous to like put my faith back out there. Because your true healing is tested once you it's get tested. into another relationship. Yes. See, we, 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 mm-hmm. we, you, you only heal to a certain level mm-hmm. when you're single. Mm-hmm. When you get into a relationship or start entertaining somebody else, they are a mirror reflecting all your insecurities, mm-hmm. reflecting all your hopes, your That's desires, it. your wishes, your wants. And they reflect that. And you're like, I don't want to be wrong. I don't want to. I don't. And, and it brings up everything, everything. that that, mm-hmm. that you thought you were healed from. And that's the true test to see if when you how you overcome those triggers mm-hmm. once yeah. you face with them again. Mm-hmm. And so I love it. And so you say, hey, God, am I ready to get back out there? It's four, four months. I feel like I've been healed. Then what did you do? Did you respond to him by a DM or what? Yeah, by DM. I don't remember what I said. What did I say? You said, hey, how are you? Hey, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> you know, trying to ease my way into said, it. I said this long paragraph. <laughs> hey, how are you? That's I'm cool, like, though. oh good. my god, here we go she again. That's and what, all I needed. Yeah. So, what did you think when, when you when you got that? How are you? I was so excited. I was at a, a open house, <laughs> and when I saw that light up, I'm like, okay, let me do what I need to do, and then let me respond. Mm-hmm. And I was I was thrilled. Honestly, it was like. You know how that 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 moment you've been waiting for, yeah. you know, because I had already checked her out. I was like miles ahead of her because I, wow. I didn't know how much research she had done, but I knew how much research I had done on her. Oh, yeah. And you know what got me? I was doing my research and this, I saw you. I saw when I saw some things, I ain't gonna put it out there, <laughs> but I saw some things that I really, really liked. And I said, okay. I could take my chances with him. You could let no, no, let, no, you gotta go. Okay, we, 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 we keep it on here. He yeah, you let on YouTube like worshiping, and that was the first thing I wrote down uh, my prayer list. So if I move, move your arm away from her, I need a fist bump right here. I need, <laughs> I, need, I, need, I, need a, I need a, I need a fist bump. <laughs> my brother was worshiping. You he understand was me? worshiping at his um, father's church, and I was like, man, why you, you want to say that? I don't know. He, Talk about wanna, <laughs> damn, he put it on YouTube. He didn't put it on the well, church. I mean, but, put but it on the church, church on YouTube, <laughs> you got a chance to see this worship experience. That's 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 beautiful. Yes, yeah. he was up there singing and worshiping. She's just trying to look after me because she know I'm I'm very protective of my father's ministry. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. draw. So yeah, she's uh, okay. looking out. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah so I want to put that out there that you were worshiping. <laughs> like, like, like he was smoking weed or something. I'm like, what are you talking about? No, no, no. He was worshiping. I'm like, yeah, you got to tell him now. Yeah, tell him. No, no, no. It was beautiful. And I said, God, I literally just prayed for a worshiper. Mm-mm-mm. And to see him <sighs> worshiping, I had never seen a man in that position before. Yeah. And so that's what, that's honestly what made me re- reach out to you. Like, you were, you know, fine. But that was the one for me. How important is looks? It's important. How? So when you rank it, when you rank it, um, when you rank it in the hierarchy of needs, Mm -hmm. how does that rank physical attraction with all the other stuff that you've, you said you wanted, you desire, you said a worshiper, a man that's intentional, all this other stuff. Mm -hmm. What if you met a guy with everything else that you wanted, but he was just average at best? So I did date that prior to, and 
I don't know. I kind of felt like I was settling. I feel like God would truly give you the desires of your heart. So you felt like he had everything else, spiritual alignment, somebody as a worshiper? No, he didn't have spiritual alignment. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, well, keep it real. Okay, no, nah, he didn't have spiritual alignment. <laughs> but um, I felt like I could be without the looks. That's why I told God previously, I'm like, okay, obviously the attractive guy, it's not working for me. So I'm trying to like find out, yeah. like maybe I should settle down here or whatever. So I can't really say. I feel like it's all equal. It's all important. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I feel like whatever is your desire, it's just, it's all important. <laughs> well, Steph, I'm going to ask you, yeah. how, how, how important is it? Yeah, honestly, um, looks was very big on my list as a man. You know, I look at uh, obviously short term and long term thinking. So <laughs> short term, you know, I know looks is always it's gonna be on point. You know, long term, you know, we get older, yeah, you know, naturally. So obviously that was a, an important thing. Um, but I, I would say no, looks was top priority for me. Top number yeah, one. It was number one. <laughs> so you gonna have the baddest <laughs> chick that, that don't love Jesus. No, but I, I actually wanted her to love Jesus too. No, with the looks. It's gotta be so all. I, I want that to be a part of the number one. <laughs> so you look good. Yeah, you love that's what make yes, her look good. It do. So it, it's, not just, it's just not physical. It, it's internal and external. It's the package. Okay. It's, it's both. <laughs> it, it, it really is. It's, it's both. It is. Because honestly, I, I have dated some 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 models yeah. in, in, in my uh dating phases. And it did nothing for me. Because it had no spiritual alignment. It huh? had no substance. That's what I'm yeah. saying. Yeah, or spiritual that's alignment. That's why I said so. Yeah. It's not that important. So that's what I'm saying. It's like you can be some of the baddest women in the world and, like you said, lack substance. And you'll right. be sitting there talking and you'll be like, what am I doing with my life? Right. What? Yeah. Is this the best I can do in life? Yeah. Like right. they have nothing. You can't even see them mothering your kids. Right. You can't even see them taking care of you in your old age. You just mm -hmm. be like – you just ain't talking about nothing. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. And so uh, that's why I said I want to really break that down because people look at y'all and they go, well, shoot, look at what they got. They, of course they like each other because they're both extremely attractive. But the thing about it is a lot of times people have these standards mm -hmm. of saying this is what I desire. I did an episode in the first season called Purpose Versus Preference. I have mm -hmm. this homegirl. Uh, she used to be the principal of my nephew. And um, she just, she said, looks is just, it looks is everything. But she will always be meeting the most toxic men that do her so wrong. And I'd be like, how'd yeah. that work out for you? Right. So yeah. how'd that right. work out for you? Yeah. Exactly. So how'd that work? How long will you let that keep doing you like that if that's the number one thing? Exactly. Because at the end of the day, we say it's, high priority but then when we actually get in those relationships what we what we're lacking and desire from that person isn't the looks because right. you already got that so right. yeah. no. that, that, that should character. make you be like I'm good exactly. I'm happy now I don't care as long as you find to look at then I'm happy but exactly. you be like Oh, you get on my nerves. You so arrogant. You so this. You <laughs> yeah. so you don't spend no time with me. You don't. Right. You're not attentive. You start complaining about everything else. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's why I really wanted to uh, tackle that because y'all drop videos and largely. Your success is largely based on the way y'all look. It draws people in and then they listen to y'all and then they find value in the substance that y'all mm -hmm. add. But the word attraction is exactly that, the ability to bring forth, to attract. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so y'all bring people to y'all and then they listen and they go, wow, they have value. They, This is amazing. They're mm -hmm. godly people. This is dope. But then they'll get this expectation. They'll be like, well, I need to get me the finest man. I need to get me a woman to yeah. look like. And you'll be like, Okay. Yeah. See how they work out for you. You right. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Exactly. And, and so that's why I said I really want to go through that with a fine tooth comb. You yeah. have debate. You said you've dated models in the past, mm -hmm. but they didn't have the substance. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so that left you yearning for what? For more. And and when you don't, when you're constantly seeking, you're never satisfied. Mm. When you're and constantly seeking, you're never satisfied. You're never satisfied. And I and I had to learn when I say I look at looks. It is the attraction. You know, it is the attraction. It's going to take, for me, for you to look beautiful enough to be able to make that first move. Yes. And, and that's that's what I was yes. mentioning. Yes. You know, that's not the end-all, be-all for me. Um, and then, you know, I, I feel like there's a, I do, I, I get that a lot, too. I used to get that a, a lot of women, you know, they try to find that number one thing, which yeah. is the looks. Yep. You know, but women, what a lot of women forget to, to really look at is, I look at Genesis, you know, when I go back to the Bible of Genesis and how Adam, you know, was was in the garden, you know, if a, a woman is trying to figure out what does a kingdom man look like, you have to look at it from a perspective that, number one, he knows 
Um, he knows uh, how to um, create an environment, right? Right. So we're talking about kings and priests. So there was such a relationship established, you know, between him and God. Like, that's why it drew her to me, to me when she talked about, you know, my worship, my relationship with God. That's Teach. something that I had already been Teach, doing. Stephon. She stepped right in into and saw what I had already been giving. And so, um, you know, when a man knows how to create that environment of worship, you know, then you can p- create a space for her, you know, to be able to step in. So th- I, I look at that like women, like look at yeah. that, you know, know that. You have men have the ability to create environments, yeah, and so does women too, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that's one thing. So find someone like that. I would encourage you to to find a man that knows how to create that environment, and also find a man that knows how to uh, who knows his identity mm-hmm. and his image. You know, if a man doesn't know his image or identity, trust me, he's gonna lead you down the wrong path. Stephon, teach. I'm telling you. (laughs) Teach, I want you to understand. I want you to go a little deeper on that. You said for a man to understand his identity. Talk, King. Yeah, so a man knows which direction he's going to go, you know, and he's going to lead you there. If he does not know, then he is going to be, he does not, he's not going to live on principle, you know. So he's going to, you're going to be looking up to him like, which way should I go? And he's going to be like, I'm going this way and I'm going this way. It's like the Bible talks about how <laughs> double-minded, the double-minded man is unstable, unstable in all his, his ways. ways. All of them. So you have to, he has to know his image, his identity. He has to create an, a space, an environment for a woman. He has to, to know how to cultivate Yes. You know, a, a woman. That's he has, my favorite he word. has the ability to cultivate you. You know, And another thing you should look for is, is um, you know, a man that knows how to... Um, you know, honor God and teach God's word, live yeah. by his principles, you know, and a, and a hard worker. Don't forget mm. that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Those yeah. are some of the things that that uh, I had been trying to study and I watched my father in different ways and I mirrored as best as I could those qualities. Love it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Look at her. She over there. She over there. <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you, it's, when I said I want you to go deeper in that because mm. that's where you start really looking at what everything you said that's not a boyfriend. That's a husband. Yeah. Mm. You know, and then sometimes people are looking for hookups or looking for something else, but then they're wanting those characteristics that a husband has. And then yeah. they find themselves empty and be like, he did me wrong. No, look what, what he didn't do you. You, you got exactly what you chose. Yeah. Like yeah. you chose that type of person. That's right. why you got exactly what that was. Right. Uh, so I love when you talk about identity, there can be no submission unless there's first a mission. Yeah. And so a lot mm-hmm. of men are mm-hmm. asking women to be submitted to them, but they have nothing for them to be submitted to right. as, as far as direction and vision. So I love that you uh, talked about that. So, all right. So now you responded. Then what did you say back to her after she sent the, hey, how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I, I told her, I said some things, you know, stood out to me on her profile. And um, I noticed that she was uh, studying real estate, you know, um, at that time. She was like, you know, in, involved with that. Um you know, because she had told me, you know, she was like involved with that. So um, that's one thing that stood out to me. And then the other thing that stood out to me, uh, I think you said like, hey, um, you know, are you are you do you live in Chicago or or something like that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so, but, so that Chicago thing was what? You were, were you at a state that you didn't want to date long distance? Yes. I, all my relationships have been long distance. <laughs> and, and it didn't work. It didn't work. So I had also told God, I said, listen, he can be in Memphis. Memphis. <laughs> 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 I'm not doing this long distance thing anymore. <laughs> and then here he comes, Chicago. Like, she asked, she asked, oh she asked again, talking about, where do you live? You live in Chicago? <laughs> I know. <laughs> all your pictures just say Chicago. I live in Chicago. See God, it can't be God. It, it cannot be God. <laughs> Don't we try to rule God out? Don't, yes. don't we try to make God fit our stuff? trying to tell stuff? him what to do. Talk about this is what I want. Yeah. I don't care what you got. This yeah. is what I need. I know better than you got. Yeah. This is what you're going to have to do. Crazy. Yeah. <laughs> and so then y'all started chatting with each other. Uh, when did the phone numbers exchange? Probably like five minutes later. Yeah. <laughs> and that was so crazy to me. He asked me if we can talk offline. I'm like, what do you mean? <laughs> Well, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not used to that. You're not used to what? Someone, okay, because you used to like um, text for a minute, warm up to see if you like this person before you get on the phone. Yeah. He was immediately trying to get on the phone phone with me. Yeah, I was was there because she had took me to a place, like in the DMs. (laughs) 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 So took me to a place. (laughs) 
<laughs> and men know what I'm talking about. When that yeah. mic bulb go off, it's, it. <laughs> it's, it's, it's it. a wrap. Yeah. Um, but no, what, what really got me too was when you had mentioned that you had lived in New York for 10 years. Mm. And then she said she moved back home to Memphis. That was her hometown. Yeah. So I asked her what inspired the move. And then her response was God's leading. And I said, <laughs> He loved that. It took you to that place, didn't it? took you to that place. Because <laughs> you was led by you God. You led by God. <laughs> so if you led by God, that, that gave me an indication that that's the Holy Spirit, mm-hmm. you know, that is leading you. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of people say God is leading, but no, it was it was how she said it. Teach. It was the timing. Yeah. And I knew it was real. Yeah. So, I mean, we had not talked about God initially in the, in the message. Yeah. You know, so that showed me something. When I say I'm right there with you, I'm right there with you because I know how it hits. It's a, it's a, it's an episode I did with Siobhan. It's, it's a beautiful couple, Siobhan and Cheyenne, and she was talking. And as they were talking about their love journey, it's like a light bulb went off, and I was like, "That's the sound of a wife. Mm. It's the sound mm-hmm. that a wife has that Come when, on. it's like deep calls into deep. Yes, sir. Mm. And so what happens is I just heard it and I just started crying. She said, what's wrong? She said, what's wrong? I said, I will not compromise having a woman of God. I just, I just, I just start crying in the interview. I said, I don't know what's going on with me. I said, I will not, I will not, I will not, I will not compromise. Well, I would toe up. I was sitting there. I said, Lord Jesus. She said, oh my God, you crying. And she said, you don't have to compromise. You don't have to compromise. And the reason why I hit so hard is because there's a sound of yes. a godly woman mm. that mm. is indisputable and irreplaceable. Come on. And so these other guys, y'all can have little hot girls, the city girls, and all that. Y'all have fun. Yeah. I want a woman of God. There's something that's, matter of fact, I'm not even going to say it. Stefan, why is a woman of God so important to you? Ooh, you talk about a woman that you will need as a future partner. So when we talk about a wife, a wife is someone who's going to be your prayer partner. Yeah. She's going to stand in the gap for you in your lowest moments. Yes. And she's going to be, not only be there in your highest moments, but she's going to push you further. Yes. So um, a woman of God is super special because, um, you know, they carry substance. Yes. They carry um, loyalty. They carry uh, God's presence. Mm. They carry the anointing. They carry what what you need naturally, even to to help grow your family. Yes, you know, and, and build a legacy. You know, this this woman right here. When I tell you, um, I've never and, and and she's younger than I am, but that doesn't you know diminutate anything about younger. But how many how many how many years? Uh, six. By six yeah. years. But when I tell you, she's at a, another mature level than I have met than some. Five, yeah. 10 years mm-hmm. higher than her because yeah. of her mindset, because of her prayer life. Yes. You know, and she's surrounded Because of her by, what? By her prayer life. Say it one more time for the people in the back. Her prayer life. They don't understand what that does. <laughs> they don't <laughs> understand what their prayer something. life does. Yeah. And, and what I notice about her, when it's something on my mind, you know, she'll she'll sense it. And then she'll ask, what, what what's up, babe? And then I'll let her know, like, this is something that's on my mind. And sometimes I may not let her know. And she can feel it. Yes. But she know how to carry it in her womb. <laughs> Drop the mic. <laughs> we talking about a prayer woman. We talking about a woman of God. Don't get me started. <laughs> Don't get me started because this is one of the most attractive features about uh, the woman that I chose. That's what I'm trying to get to. It's, so that's what that's what I'm yeah. saying. See the the attraction thing. Yes, she's beautiful. Yeah, but she would not be as beautiful if she didn't have the other part. She yeah. would not be. Honestly, she would not be. Because the moments that we have with God, where we pray together and we, issues of life, you know, out of the heart comes the abundance of the yes. issues of life. Yes. We got to go to God with that kind of stuff. And you just can't carry it all by yourself. At all. So that's the that's the beauty of having a woman of God. You know, as a king, you have someone who has access to your concerns. Have access to your concerns. The Bible says one can chase away a thousand, but yeah. two can set 10,000 demons yeah. to flight. That's and it. it's not just because it's two of y'all together. It's because y'all two are in alignment. So if one of y'all Christians and y'all faith filled believers and other person be like, I don't need all that. Mm-hmm. Y'all, ain't been in, y'all, ain't, y'all ain't tackling no 10,000 demons. No. Yeah. You know, no. but the two of y'all together in alignment, purposed yeah. oh by God, God mm-hmm. there's nothing that can come against your household. 
Nothing. Nothing. Doesn't Nothing. mean that you won't face attacks, but yeah. it will not prosper. That's it. That's Ooh, what's so beautiful. And God. that's what I'm mm. saying. That's yes, the reason God. why Lord I God. say we get caught up mm. on some of the most minute stuff. Yeah. But when you get people that are kingdom minded and yeah. purpose filled, yeah. Yeah. Th that beauty surpasses. The Bible says uh, charm is deceptive and beauty mm -hmm. doesn't last. But mm -hmm. a woman who honors God is mm -hmm. greatly to Praise. be praised. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yes, that's sir. what made me send tears down my face because I I kept saying, gosh, you get that? Mm -hmm. That's how you get to, she said in her video or something where she said that she wanted a husband that uh, eight years down the line or whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. um, what I'm talking about, I always talk about, well, I've never even shared this publicly. I said, when you get the right person, God locks a time capsule. It's a time capsule release. Mm -hmm. There's 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 pills that you may take, you know, Tylenol that may have a time capsule release that throughout the day it releases a little bit of the formula and the medicine to get you throughout a 12-hour period or whatnot. Mm -hmm. I believe that when you get linked with your purpose partner. Mm -hmm. God places a time capsule in there. Yes, sir. Year four. You don't need that. You you don't know that you're about to do this business deal. And mm -hmm. then she says, oh, I did that before. Mm -hmm. You know, hey, yeah, I, I, all you have to do is do this, 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 this. You go through a problem. God forbid that y'all go through a sickness or whatnot. Mm -hmm. And then and then uh, she's able or you able to say, listen, you know, I dealt with my mom. My mom dealt with such, 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 such. I know how to help you with that. I watched my dad do this. And she's mm -hmm. like, well, how did how did you know? How did God mm -hmm. in his, all his infinite wisdom. Come on, man. Yes. Come God on. is omniscient. He's all knowing. Mm -hmm. So he mm -hmm. knows what Stefan is going to need 10 years from now mm -hmm. that you have. Yeah. He knows mm -hmm. exactly what a mind is going to need yes. 20 years from now yes. that yes. you have. Yes. Yes. That's what's so beautiful yes. about having a kingdom marriage. Yes. Yes. It's a time capsule that gets released in those most, that seven year itch that happens when most people get divorced. God says, but I put a time capsule release on, in that moment. Come so y'all ain't finna have to weather, weather that seven year itch. Come that on. that seven year of completion does mm -hmm. not mean that y'all gonna y'all marriage is gonna be completed. It means that I'm about to release a time capsule that's gonna bring y'all even closer and closer together. Yes, that's and it. that's what Come happens on. when you get that two to mm. casting out ten thousand demons. Yes. Oh, that's man. what I'm talking about. Come so when on. I the reason why I have y'all on this podcast today is because I saw something in y'all mm. that y'all are going to not only redefine what marriage looks like, but go. even the 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 way to get there. Mm -hmm. You know, to be able to hear God every step of the way that 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 y'all are moving in tandem mm -hmm. with God. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to tell the end of the story before we get here, mm -hmm. but we're gonna go ahead and, and we're gonna stop here and get back to this story. Yes. How did y'all? Because I get excited when I talk to y'all. <laughs> y'all know we we don't have some conversations on the phone. Yes, so yeah, so man. so I'm talking to friends. So um, how did y'all y'all first phone conversation? What happened? Ooh. So I, she left me her number and, um, I said, uh, when can I call you? She said, you can call me before six. So <laughs> yes, <laughs> she, for the time. you need some boundaries. Yeah. She definitely gave, gave boundaries. She and said I, six. And I Why honestly, six? I don't know. I honestly you respected made it. Up. You just made it up. You tried to be hard. Six o'clock. <laughs> this is me trying to protect my heart. At this right, point, right. I don't know what's about to go down. <laughs> <laughs> and I think you had an event to go to. Oh, you know what? It was my grandmother. Yeah. Uh, you know, okay. Yeah, yeah. You uh -huh. had an event. So, uh, <laughs> I, said, but I, I respected that, you know, <laughs> boundaries is important. So, you know, I left the uh, open house and I got, I got in the car and that was the first thing that I did, right? So I drove to, um, like when I, I was driving and I was getting some gas. So I parked, get some gas, and then I called her. I was like, let me just call her. I didn't know that I was going to be at the gas station for an hour and a half. <laughs> you, did, you just sat there the whole time? I, I sat there the whole time and and I didn't care. <laughs> but he called me. Yeah, I called her. And, what and I said, absolutely not. You need to call. You need to FaceTime me. I need to see you because you are so bold in your approach with me. Like how you have all this energy and now you want to just talk to me on the phone? We need a FaceTime call. <laughs> she wanted me to FaceTime her. And I was like, oh, that's nothing but a thing. He said, he said stay less. Yeah. So I we got did. on FaceTime. Got on the FaceTime. And um, when I saw her, it was like sparks was flying all over the phone. And and I saw something in her. I, I just, every, the more we talked, it was such a joy. It was easy. Like when I, when I was speaking to you, it was a joy that hit me like I couldn't believe. Mm -hmm. And this was not lust. This was an inner joy yeah. that I couldn't even explain. No, I felt like I was looking at my husband. And that kind of made me nervous. Like, what is this feeling? Like, it's something like when they say, you know, you literally know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Y'all know my situation, so I'm not going to say Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I'll be yeah. like, anyway. So, <laughs> and and I'm going to tell you this. This wasn't the first conversation, and it wasn't the second. But I, I remember, like, in the beginning of us talking, the way what really drew me in about Iman was the questions that she were asking me. What she asked you? Yeah, what I asked you. Well, one question you asked me was, what environment do you see yourself coming home to? <laughs> Who asked that question? What environment? <laughs> what environment? <laughs> Not y'all looking at me like this. What environment? Where did that come from? Because I wanted to know what kind of man he was. Like, did he like peace in his home? Like, I just wanted to know. <laughs> what <we> environment? <laughs> Who asked that question? I ain't never heard that question in my and life. That was the Holy Spirit speaking. Uh, that Holy Spirit was speaking. <laughs> I ain't never heard nobody say that to I you. never asked anyone that. That's what's so crazy. I'm telling you. And I definitely said peace, you know, a woman uh, that I can look forward to coming to, you know. But but it, that question really shook me. It will sh shake me. Y'all shook right now. Nobody yeah, never asked no environment. Shook. <laughs> <laughs> environment you want to come home to. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. But a woman that's that, what that says is that she's so intentional about creating that environment. The same things exactly. you talked about, about her coming into your environment of yes. worship and what God had already created in your garden, so to speak. Yes. Yes. She already saying that, hey, I got a garden I want to prepare for you as well. Mm -hmm. yes. And so for her to say that, it's like, okay, I see you, Holy Spirit. This Come is on a different level. Okay. Yeah. What other question did she ask you? She asked me, um, you know, what are we, where do you see yourself going? In life mm -hmm. and and that's part of that identity that's that's part of that image yeah you know that question could shake up a lot of men <laughs> <laughs> i wanted to know his purpose because like it you really said could. earlier about yeah. um women we have to get under the mission yeah. i wanted to know could i get under it like what is your purpose yeah is and it something we could do together Mm. And I love that because mm. I have been planning for this. I've been praying about this. Yeah. And God's been working on me about this and all this. My purpose simply is to glorify God. And people com complicate purpose because they're not so in tune <laughs> to God. You know, like, do you question how your iPhone works? You know, do, do, you, do you question how this technology, this, these cameras, do you question that? It just works. And it's all about what it represents. You know, so that's that's when she asked me, I was like, my purpose is to glorify God. And and I told her some of the things I was involved in, mm. you know, and and I painted a picture to see if that's something. And we can talk about that because yeah, that goes was, along. Yeah. You know, when I actually came to see you, but that's fast and forward. But after that first conversation, you know, we we talked, we laughed. We had a few more conversations after that. And uh, two weeks later, got called to fast. Who In initiate weeks. the fast? Why? I did. Why? What happened? Because you know how you feel like there's some things that are too good to be true. It felt too good to be. And true. I felt like I was like five steps forward. And you got scared, huh? And maybe so. <laughs> yeah, because you're like, am Naturally I tripping? So. I don't even know this woman like this. <laughs> I feel like this is my wife, but I don't but, even know her like that. But it wasn't so much of a fear. It was. It was so much of a you know I want to make sure I follow the right steps for me. You know because sometimes. You might not even be afraid, but and you might know how to do things, but you just sit it aside just because, you know, we're going to see how it goes. But by, by being a man of purpose, by being in purpose, just follow the steps. You already know what to do. So that's that's what I felt. I felt God was causing us to go on the fast because I was excited. You were excited. We were jump, we were laughing. Yeah. I remember one conversation we we had. I think we laughed for like three hours it straight. Was it was crazy. The joy. That joy was, is, on was real, and it still is real. Yeah, it is. And and it was something about, you know, that fast that helped me to identify. You know, we talked about finding someone that's equally yoked, but that fast helped me to identify the yoke. <laughs> you see what I be dealing with? <laughs> <laughs> A whole husband. Talk about the yolk. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so we, when you think about egg yolk, you know, it's super fluid. It's super easy. It just merges together naturally, you know. But so there's no question about, you know, it's mixture. You know, so when we talk about being equally yoked, you know, you find someone um, who, who you can establish like a common ground with, God, you know, and you can build from that common ground. Ooh, Lord. You know, so... 
that to me, that fast really did it. Like it, it really showed me her heart. It showed me her prayer life. Mm-hmm. It showed me where she was in life. Like it really opened up the deep parts of, of our hearts. Yeah. You know, so when we went to pray, like when she went to pray, my mouth was like, <laughs> this woman can pray. <laughs> That's how I was. Seriously. Yeah. So 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 y- y'all fasted. How long did y'all fast? Was it two days? It was three, five, Saturday, Sunday. It was, was three. Three days. Mm-hmm. Three days. Were y'all in communication during that fast? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And y'all were praying and doing all that stuff together. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And after the fast, what confirmation did you get? I got it before we fasted. Cause I'm like, oh, first of all, you're gonna ask me to fast with you and you wanna <laughs> pray with me? I know you it. I know you my husband. <laughs> so I knew. I knew when he asked, I already knew in that moment that this was my husband. But I'm like, okay, but for confirmation, (laughs) let's go ahead and go through this. And I'm like, okay, God, speak, you know, let us know what this is. And when I heard Stefan praying, I was just falling, like, in love, like, even more because... Mm. Uh, I just heard how I pray. Like, I'm with myself 24-7. Yeah. So I'm mm-hmm. always praying. And to hear him, it sounded like me. Mm. And that was so powerful to just see, like, a reflection of myself. The sound of a husband. The sound of a husband. Boy, let me tell you something. Wow. Jesus. It's so, a monet. The yeah. sound. Oh, uh, yeah, it's a sound. It's a sound. It's a sound. It's a monet. It's a doggone sound. I'm telling you, it's a sound. <laughs> Jesus, it's a sound. Mm. So, <laughs> I'm telling you, it's a sound. I'm telling you, it's a sound. Yeah. When you, so you were, you were talking, who is your circle? Who's your community that you were telling about this whole thing? Okay, so I have my mom, my father, my god mom. My aunties, <laughs> they're not really aunties, but they're like girlfriends, but they're my mom's friends. Um, my girlfriends. And so I all the tribe. So you're telling the whole tribe every step of the way of this. I didn't tell them until after the fast. So I told my parents and um, I think. Your godmother. Yeah, my yeah, you godmother. Said godmother. They only knew me as this man. This man. I didn't give a name because I wanted to know for myself. This is only two weeks in. Everything yeah. is happening quickly. Yeah. So I let them know. And they were like, okay. They let me know they're watching and praying with me. And um, my stepdad, he was like, this is it. Like, I really feel like this is At it. At what stage did he say that? The second week with the fast. He told me. He called me. Um down to the kitchen. He's like, I want to talk to you about something. And he told me, he said, um, don't be afraid. Mm. Just trust the Lord with this. He said, because God got you. Mm. And he said, everything is going to be okay. He said, I believe this is your husband. But he said, but just keep walking it out. What did that mean to you for a man to say that? It just brought me so much peace. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it gave me it activated my faith to keep going because he knew how f- afraid I was from my heart um, to get broken again. And I just trusted his words. I feel like that was the Holy Spirit speaking through him to help me to just keep going. Like, let's see what the end is going to be because I wanted to end it before, you know, and that's what I want to get on. So what happened? It, it was a moment that your mom had to talk you off the ledge early on. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So this is, yeah, this is the first week. <laughs> It was probably like three, four days in. So I'm helping my girlfriend with an event. And my mom picks me up. And she was like, so what's going on? What's the update with you and Steph? I'm like, everything is good. But what do you, what are you sensing? Because she, um, I would tell her about all my past relationships. And she always let me know this ain't it. <laughs> and so she was like, I don't. She was like, I just have peace. I don't. I'm not sensing anything. And so that scared me because I'm like, you always sensing something. Like, you always know. Like, why this time you don't, you're not giving me what I'm looking for? Like, I need a yes or no. Or no, yeah. And she's right. like, keep walking. Mm. Just trust God. Mm, mm, and that wasn't enough for me. Yeah. Because <laughs> I'm terrified of getting my heart broken again. Yeah. Mm. And so I remember I said you know what I can't do this she's like you can't do what (laughs) I said I can't put myself back out there again and she was like you are crazy and I'm like no it's over (laughs) she was like you haven't met him yet nothing nothing. has happened (laughs) this is 
is my trauma speaking. <laughs> Stephanie did nothing. Stephanie did everything assuming. right. She just said, it's over. It's like, over. What did I do? You DM me. You yes. should have never DM me. You too me. intentional. <laughs> you scared me. You scared you, me. You want me too much. You want me? I'm nervous. <laughs> that? I need toxicity in this thing. <laughs> yes. Yes. I need to be trying to figure out if you really like me, if you don't. You right. actually say you do. I don't like that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was terrified. The girl said, it's over. Your mom it's said, what is wrong? She was like, you're crazy. <laughs> so I stopped talking. I completely shut down. And she comes to me. She said, you know, you have gotten on my last nerve, right? <laughs> I'm like, how I get on your last nerve? She said, because I cannot believe that you are tripping like this. I was like, my eyes broke down. Come on, I'm so scared. <laughs> I'm so scared to put myself back out there again. That's real. That's real. Yeah. 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 And she just watched, mm-hmm. and I'm telling you, no, it was very serious. Like, it yeah. was funny, but I was bawling. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that, that trauma showed be real. me. Yeah. Yeah. How, you know, just how I needed to trust God. Mm. Mm-hmm. Because it's like, what has happened in your life that you got to this point where you're so fearful to step out Come on faith on. again? Mm. 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 And my mom, she just, when she saw that I was really serious, she just hold, just grabbed me and hugged me. And was like, it's going to be okay. Respond to the man. <laughs> um, all, is, all is well. And she was like, just keep trusting God. And what's so crazy is Steph did not know that I was experiencing that. Mm-hmm. He texted me and he said something like, I'm praying for you. And he said, I take authority over what's ever happening. Stefan? <laughs> yes, he Stephane. was <laughs> Stefan, did you do that, Stefan? I did. I did. I had no idea she was dealing with what she was dealing with, you know, but something, something hit me just to just say, you know what, let me just send her this just to. Like, who does that? Because he could hear the sound. He could hear the sound. That, that sound. He could hear that it. Sound, he was like, man. something ain't right. Sound. Something ain't right. Yeah. yeah. And you can feel, you know, when, when, when you're involved with someone, you can kind of feel the other person. Yeah. There's some stuff that may not be unsaid. And yes. It may make you feel uneasy. You know, because some people don't just come forth out and just say how they really feel. Yes. And I think that's a big problem in today's dating land is that if we can truly be honest with ourselves, you know, we can really get somewhere. Yes. You know, versus hurting each other. So then you tap back in. You said, all right, you cried. Your mom held you. Y'all pray. He sent this message. When you got that message, what'd you think? I said, okay, God. I see what kind of man this is. I believe this is your son, and I'm going to trust you. So I just put myself back out there. This time, I let go of all my fear. I really stepped out on faith. And then after that, that's when he called the fast. And we've just been together ever since. Like, it's just been beautiful. (laughs) So y'all met each other. Y'all first date was after how long of knowing each other. Y'all met each other face to face. So it was three weeks later. Three weeks later. That's Tell right. us about that. You you, you, you visited Memphis. Yeah, what happened? So obviously, the relationship had gotten to a point where I wanted to come see her. I said, all right, enough is enough. You know, I need to see this woman face to face. So uh, I decided to, um, I called um, my one of the, the vendors that I work with. I said, you know, I need some nice roses, you know, and then this is what I need you to do. I need you to put uh, something special on the rose. So, you know, I worked that out with her, and I'll tell you what it is later. And so I got that ready, and um, I was like, uh, I called. I was like, you know what? I want to come, you know, see you. You know, I said that um, I feel like it's, it's time for us to meet. And, um, you know, it was, it was right at the time where um, I think it was like a Friday. My buddy was getting actually measured for his, for his, uh, his wedding and everything. And um, so he came over, and I called. I was like... So um, should I come like next week or the week after? It was like one of those kind of things. And so to make a long story short, uh, she said, um, you know, yeah, yeah, feel free to come. So I came down. I called. I was like um, coming down on this date and we ended up, we ended up um, meeting up and I showed up with the roses. And so uh, what was crazy about that, though, me showing up with the roses as I was on the airplane getting to Memphis, um, this lady walked up to me on the airport and she, in the airplane. She was like, you know, what is that you got in your hand? It's something very special, you know, um, that's happening. Cause she had, she saw this long thing of something and, and that could have been anything, yeah. you know, <laughs> it, it was wrapped up in this black bag. So 
um, she she saw it, and I was like, oh, it's just some, it's roses, you know. I'm meeting someone in Memphis for the first time, so um, she was like, well, I want to see if I could be a part of this, you know. She said, it looks like, you know, you um, <laughs> is there someone here in Memphis? I'm like, yeah, I met her on, on Instagram. She's like, so tell me more. So <laughs> this is this, this, this a random lady, you know. <laughs> so I'm sitting on the plane and uh, we're going back and forth. She wants to know. She's like, so um, how are you going to present her to flowers? I was like, well, I'm still trying to figure that part out. So <laughs> so, so I told her, I was like, I, I plan on presenting it to her possibly at dinner or maybe before, like when I first see her. So she was like, well, let me know. She said, I can hold on to the roses and I can bring the roses to you, you know, for, at dinner. And, I, and I'm looking at her like, wait, I don't, know you. I don't know you. I didn't spend this money on these roses. I don't know how they're going to end up. It's that pop from Chicago, so you ain't trust nobody. No, I'm from Chicago. Trust nobody in Memphis. Exactly. I know it. <laughs> so I, I have these roses. So I said, you know what, let me think about that and uh, the, what she proposed. And I thought about it. I was like, you know what? I'm actually going to present them to her in person. And so um, I ended up doing it and uh, before. But I told her I'm going to present it in person. And I was like, you know what? What you can do is uh, you could record the moment. Because she still wanted Perfect. to be a part. Yeah. So that's what actually triggered uh, us to start recording. Yeah. You know, us, our experiences. Like, it started in that moment. And, you know, when it, what happened was I um, had her record. And then I came out and presented her roses uh, with the date that we first met on, on Instagram. He's so romantic. So, all right. So now y'all are at dinner. Y'all get ready to go to dinner. There was a conversation that really confirmed a great deal for you, Stefan. What was that conversation? What question did you ask her? So um, as I was on the plane, God gave me uh, a plan because I asked God to give me a game plan to present to her. And uh, he gave it to me within five minutes. So at the time when we sat you know, at the table, you know, we were blown away about the whole experience she was. She was appreciative and she set up reservations and everything for dinner. So I proposed to her the game plan. The game plan was for me to come down to Memphis to visit her, meet her family. And then the next thing I showed me was she would in turn come to Chicago, meet my family. And then, you know, um, well, we get to engage a little bit more in, in Chicago and, and I show her around a little bit. So um, after that, you know, I, we would have counseling, you know, that was a, the next thing. And then I'm presenting her on our first date, this, first this plan. Date. <laughs> Who does and, For real. And then after I that. Love, Marcia, I love Stefan. That's my dude. <laughs> I love this dude. I love him. Because he think like me. It's like, I mean, that's why I said, people I bring on my podcast, it's, it's a part of my past, my present, and my future. Wow. And so all this is by design. That's why wow. I, when I saw that, I said, Wow. Hey, that's my brother. That's, that's my, my brother, that's, man. That's my brother right there. So yes, come on, sir. talk. Lay it out. Lay the game plan out. Yeah, so game after the, the the counseling, um, you know, obviously I would propose to her because from counseling, like, we got the wisdom that we need, yes. you know, to carry forward. So, and that was very important to me and her, you know, at that time. And after that, I proposed to her, you know. Um, no, what happened? You had, it, so, it, so that was the next y'all step. Y'all was at dinner. Y'all was at dinner. Well, right. That was the next step on, on the game plan. I, I will propose to her. And then after that, um, then we would get married. And then, you know, I had on the plans to be able to finish this, this rehab project. We cash out from it. And then we continue and enjoy life. And that was all the so part of the plan. So did you have a timeline with this thing? Yes. Yeah, so we did discuss that at the table. Uh, so I let her know, like, you know, if she's willing to, to move forward with it. You know, I would be willing to for us to get married after February <laughs> because after, that would have crazy. left after February of 2023. Uh, yes. So yes, y'all have just been getting married. Y'all be still trying to get married next month, right? Yeah. Exactly. Or this month when this drops, this month y'all be getting married. Exactly. That's, that's what you had in your mind, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> this was June when I presented this to her. Yeah. Of 2022. Yeah. So we thought we were going to get married like a year later. Yes. <laughs> but God was like, no. Oh my gosh. And it was so funny because people could see, like, our family could see the momentum that was happening between us. We were excited, you know. Everybody asking us for updates and stuff. And, you know, we just giving them little bits of information, like, yeah, things are going good. And that's <laughs> it. And they like pulling on us. So, but back to us being at the table. So, when I presented her to her the game plan, <laughs> you know, I said, so how do you feel about it? And, and what did you say, babe? 
I said, wherever you go, I'll go. That right there, when, when, I said, <laughs> when, she, hit, when she hit you with that Frodo she, from Lord of the Rings, oh listen, boy, listen, Frodo, listen. wherever you go, I'll go. Let me tell you something. That right there, shut it down. I, this woman has words that I have never heard before <laughs> that, that line up together collectively. I'm like, where, where did they get her from? <laughs> Memphis. <laughs> but, <laughs> but no, man. What it, made it, you it, say that, Iman? Ooh. I don't know. That's why I feel like the Holy Spirit be speaking through me. I meant it though, but I was like, because you said you already felt confirmation that, that I was, knew that this was my husband. You just knew it. I was just waiting for for us to meet in person. And, and that was my biggest concern because I had dated, you know, long distance previously. Yeah. So that was a big burning question. You know, if I present you this happened? game what plan, yeah, yeah, what's, yeah. Next? And, you yeah. Know, what's next? She's like, yeah, I'm, I'm down for it. I'm like, okay. So the fact of the matter is I still live in Chicago. Yeah. And you live in Memphis. Yeah. And that's when she dropped that on me. Wherever you go, I'll go. No, but seriously, for me, it was because he was the first man to come to me with a plan. No man has ever. Am I stop? I'm going to wait. <laughs> Jesus, you can't just keep talking. Just let it just sit there. <sighs> Jesus. You said he's the only man that came to you with a plan. A plan. Like he had it on his phone and said, listen, <laughs> here, how do you feel about this? <laughs> I'm like, I'll tell you, this is my nigga. I got to call you. That's, hey, one more thing. That's my, that's my, when, when I tell you, when I tell you, <laughs> man. Like, you have showed up on our first date with a plan in writing with the date on it said Iman and Stefan. <laughs> I've been waiting my whole life for this. So wherever you go, I <laughs> <laughs> and I would tell you the crazy thing about it is I, I have never done that. I know you haven't. I, I have never you, done that. I but know you but she, she brought that out of me. That's why I said she brought me to a place. She had a way of bringing me to a place. That joker said, I'm putting it all on the table now. I'm, I'm you, it out. you the one or you ain't? We're going to find out today. I ain't going to be spending this money flying to see you. Either you the one or you ain't. Oh, God. <laughs> oh my God. Might, so far, so I ain't got no time to play. Listen. He was not playing. Because <laughs> you said in the previous relationship, you was dating a woman in Atlanta, right? Mm -hmm. And and what happened in that situation? Where where right? So in that situation, I believe I was like around thirty years old. You know, this was sixty years ago, and um, I remember not being at the same place where I was. You know, and this is all a part of finding your identity. Yeah, because at that place, I was going through identity crisis. You know, I'm thirty years old. What am I doing with life? <laughs> exactly. exactly. <laughs> so, so guys started showing me like, you know, things you got to give up, like certain careers you got to give up. You know, um, because I was into like production, and I used to do like into like a little entertainment, like modeling, acting, little yeah. stuff here and there. But um, I had to let that go because it wasn't getting me anywhere. Yeah. You know, it got me to a place in my career where I was comfortable. And yeah. I was proud of. But it was like, okay, what's that next level? Yeah. And for me, it was real estate. And so she actually encouraged me to do that. But talking to her, you know, she was almost willing to, to move. It's almost. But, almost. Yeah, yeah it, was, it was almost, but I didn't give her enough picture to show her. I didn't give her, like, I didn't present. I didn't give her a plan. I didn't give her, I didn't give her a wrong. plan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Blueprint. yeah. I didn't give her the blueprint, you know, because I remember her looking for a job. Okay, she, she went into that mode, and I was actually going to start ring shopping. You know, I went one time. This is the only time I did this. <laughs> Never bought the ring. Praise God. <laughs> Been a wasted investment. Yeah, exactly. But in that moment, um, that's why I can speak like you have to know who you are. You know, before you you step into like a serious relationship, you know, because if you really want to create a, a, a pathway for a woman as a man, you got to show her where you're going. That's it. You got to show her. And, and that, back then it didn't work because I believe I was in that position to show her. Good, good. That's good self-awareness. And then you came with her. What made you want to do that so soon? Give her the plan so soon. On the first day. Yeah, on the first day. Literally, I was, we had been vibing for about three weeks. I knew where we were in a relationship. You know, when when I prayed to God, um, you know, you know, God, who is this woman to me? You know, this is how I'm feeling. I yeah. brought my feelings, my desire, my emotions. I said, God, you gotta show me, you know, and and then he gave it to me on the fast. You know, he said, This is my daughter. He said, I want you to protect her, honor her, and love her. And from that moment, I walked away from that fast, like, 
you know, she went from me pursuing her to her actually becoming my assignment. So I literally, I literally felt, I felt like this is it. You know, like when me coming down there was to seal the deal. It was to finally figure out, is she willing to move? Like our bond, our vibe, I got to see if this is really real because it feels real. In person, it began to feel real, but it really comes down to, you know, where she's at. You know, because you could feel a certain way. Like I felt a certain way, but I needed to make sure she felt the same way as well. That's like good. Ready to take it to the next level. You know, and I knew she, I knew it was in her. I just wasn't. I needed to hear her say that. The reason why I knew is because of the question she asked me. You said that lobster died in vain. <laughs> that lobster that I ordered. <laughs> Let's have a moment of silence for the lobster. For the Lord lobster. Jesus. For the lobster. Because <laughs> when Iman said that, it snatched his breath away. He didn't even know what to do. He couldn't even gather himself. He could I couldn't. Not. She said, wherever you go, I'll go. I said, I, can't, I couldn't even eat. Like, he I felt like I was anything. being punked. I was like, excuse me, waiter. Am I being punked? Asking everybody. Am I he being punked? I, I did. I did. I'm telling you. I went to a whole mode. Yeah. <laughs> and I said, you no, you're not going to sit here and agree. Oh, yeah. That's what he said. No, you're not about to sit here and agree with me. No, no that's that far from the sabotage. This ain't going to work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This ain't going to work. Sabotage. This ain't going to work. Right. This ain't going to work. You agree. That's on my trauma. <laughs> <coming. laughs> Let me kick it down. Something's oh, wrong with you because that shouldn't be that easy. Something's yeah. wrong with you. Yeah. <laughs> he gets mad at you. Get I up was, and walk I away. I was shocked. I was literally shocked. <laughs> <laughs> I was, and I did not eat. <laughs> That's why I said that lobster died in vain. <laughs> oh my God. And so, mm -hmm. and so from that moment, how did y'all move? So after y'all left that dinner table, um, Y'all knew that at that point, when did y'all end up having a conversation like, we together, we go together now? Like, yeah. what, what yes. happened? He never asked me to be his girlfriend. Good. Proud of you. Um, Proud yeah. of you. you, you know, <laughs> let me tell you something. People don't understand that. Mm -hmm. I always say that we're going to go from friend to fiance. We ain't finna, mm -hmm. we, I, don't, I don't need no little girlfriend. That's you it. know what I'm saying? It's like, what? what is that? For I what? can't have the same thing that my, my nephew got. You know right. what I'm saying? Right. He's 14 years old. We the same thing. I'm 44 years old. Talking about, you got a girlfriend? Your girlfriend coming over? My right. girlfriend coming over too? No, right. we are not the same. No. I'm Major too moves. intentional for that. Yeah. You're going to be a fiance. You ain't, fin you ain't finna be no girlfriend. So, wow. yeah. So, so I'm glad, Stefan. That's why I said it's my brother right there. That's, that's my, it. That's it was my... established at dinner. I was like, so you're going to be my wife. There it so is. going to be his wife. And there it is. she was like, you're going to be my husband. And then. There it is. Yep. And then, Steph, you start introducing me to all of his family. Like, he start, he said, okay, we got a, a Zoom date with so-and-so, so-and-so. I was like. You start, you start setting up Zoom stuff? Zoom calls. <laughs> I need you to meet so and so. -and -so. I mean, yep. every week I was Zoom. and then he would introduce me. He was like, "Y'all, no, I'm weak." He said, "Y'all, this is Mrs. Alfred. This is soon to be Mrs. Alfred." That's what I'm talking about. I mean, literally, I mean, that's what my mom yeah. told me to look for. She said, "When a man brings you into his world, that's how you know that's the one." I like your mama. <laughs> your mama's a wise woman. A wise woman. <laughs> she is. So. He started calling everybody. We was having meetings with his family. He was we were getting to know each other, and we, when then when I went to Chicago, <laughs> he used to tell everyone, "This is my soon to be fiance, or this is my soon to be wife." Yeah, yeah. yeah. He never called me girlfriend. Yeah. So everybody already knew who I was, and knew how intentional he was about you. Yeah. Yeah. He said, this is this something different. Mm -hmm. So they automatically put a level of respect on you from his circle of influence because they said, no, nah, Stefan moving different. Everyone this this this, me. this this is this is different. Mm -hmm. Man. And that's why I said the we are each other's. We're we're our lovers PR representative mm -hmm. based on how we talk about that person to the people that don't even know them. Yeah. And the other people mm -hmm. will get a measure of buy-in based on how we speak of that person outside of their so presence. True. And so by him calling you, this is my future wife, they mm -hmm. go, All right. understood. Yeah. You know, he didn't just say, oh, this is mine. They got to say, is that his girl? He's talking to her. They dating. No. What's, what's going on? They, what? He said, understood. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's so good. He's moving like a king. And we, we met, you know, uh, got engaged and married in five months. Yeah. You know, so, that, but, but it was the steps that took us to get there. Yeah. Like I was embraced so like fully by her family. Yeah. You know, by the people who covered her in the past. 
you know, and still now. Mm -hmm. And so they literally rolled out the red carpet for me. Like I, w I remember showing up, she asked me that I w was I ready to meet her parents. And I said, you know, I would love to meet them. I said, I would like for us to spend a little time first just so I can know for sure that, you know, things are, are going the way they should. And literally her parents like laid it out. Like they had me eating food on their, their China plate that they from got. From their wedding. From their wedding. Yeah, they treated him like a king. You know, they treated me like a king. No, but when I met his parents, when I walked through the door, she had a white carpet rolled out for me with rose petals and candles. No, they did not I do swear, that. What, we what? have to put it on our video on YouTube. <laughs> yes. Why they, they do that? They were standing up waiting for me to come through and they had our pictures. <laughs> <laughs> me and Steph pictures all over the house. Uh -uh. <laughs> yes. why, why is that? What, what is that about, Stefan? It's a no storybook. No, it was like a literally, fairy tale. Yeah. It was. You know, like they, my parents got wind of, of how I was treated in Memphis. And and they looked at her, started to already call her daughter. They called me daughter immediately. You know, so you they, said with rose petals on white carpet. They, they literally did. I will show did. you the video, the footage. <laughs> they literally did. And as she walked in, um, they welcomed her. It was the first time them I'm ever meeting. Walking on meet white them. carpet. They said they were going back and forth between red or white, <laughs> but they did white because they knew we were going to get married. Yep. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you know it was right. You know, like when, when I saw family, her godmother embrace you. Oh my god! And she started crying, and she's like, "Thank you, Jesus." I was just like. Man, it's, it, but there's that sound again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The sound that the godmother had mm -hmm. was a sound of, I could see her tearing in the spirit yeah. mm -hmm. on behalf of her. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it was the confirmation that she wasn't crazy, that, that she was praying and seeking for something that happened um, it was the it was the manifestation of a miracle, yes. and so the godmother, when the the sound that came from her, it was just like that's why she embraced you, was hugging you, she was crying, and mm -hmm. I was like, this is the first time she saw this man. Yes, but it wasn't the first time she saw this man. Yeah, <sighs> so good. Mm -hmm. Oh Jesus. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Oh God, dog it it mm -hmm. it messed me. Up, I was like, yes, that's how important it is to have a community of believers around you yes. because the Bible says the prayers of the righteous availeth much. Yes. The greatest much we could ever get is who we choose as our purpose partners. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so for her to pray and for y'all, y'all community and y'all tribe to manifest each other in each other's lives is, that's why I call this the miracle of love mm -hmm. because it's, it's, it. It's not just y'all praying. Mm -mm. It's the people that love y'all so much. That's yeah. Right. And that's the reason why they were able to embrace y'all as family. When y'all yeah. come in, it seems like y'all have known each other forever. And they're yeah. like, hey, son. Hey, son. And you're like, wow, this is. I was talking to uh, Fallon. We did the episode um, that was last week that talked about, um, she said when her, when her and her late husband got married, it happened fast. Mm -hmm. And I said, what is fast? Yeah, what does that right. really, what does that really mean? Mm -hmm. right. Because time, God is no, he don't care about time. You yeah. know what I'm saying? No. He don't ever look at time. No. He, he just be like, that's why he says a, a day is like a thousand years and mm -hmm. his ways are not our ways and all that type of stuff. And it's the intentional time that you guys spent with each other asking each other those questions, having those conversations that y'all right. never had with a human being on the face of this earth. Yeah. And mm -hmm. that's how you know it was God. Um, so now y'all are dating. How did it go from this expected timetable of February of 2023 for it to take place in October of 2022? Okay. So we were planning the wedding and um, we started looking at venues. This is before a ring is on my finger. We just... <laughs> Y'all be putting the cart before the horse. Y'all be like, the the horse. We're still, we're just trying to prepare because we knew the kind of wedding that we wanted to have. We yeah. wanted to be nice, mm -hmm. and so um, we found the wedding venue, and so we we're ready to make a deposit. And my mom was gonna pay for our wedding, and so my mom says, for whatever reason, um, I see you guys getting married sooner. <laughs> And we're like, how you like? How how do you? We, we just met each other. Like we want things to unfold. We have a game plan yeah. in place. She was like, I'm telling you, this thing is gonna happen quick. She said, God is moving quickly on you guys' behalf. She was like, but we can keep moving forward with this venue. And so, um, 
she will not sign this contract <laughs> with the venue. And we're like ready to go, you know, to have this wedding. We decided to have a wedding in May 2023. Mm. But she just did not have a piece about it. So then we were like, okay, trying to figure out what was that that was missing? Why couldn't we move forward with it? So we're um, praying about it. So then we find another venue and we're like, okay, maybe this is it. So then my mom comes back to us. She said, would y'all rather have money towards a down payment of a home? Yeah. Or would you guys rather have this elaborate wedding? And so we said, we'd rather have the money for a home. And facts. You know, so we Real thought time. we weren't going to have this wedding. But um, our family still wanted us to have a wedding. Yeah. And so I'm like, if that, okay, so what are we waiting for at this point? Yeah. If we're not going to have this elaborate wedding, that was the purpose of getting married the year later. Yeah. So we could have time to really plan. Mm -hmm. And so um, once we came to the conclusion that we weren't going to have that wedding, um, we just said we're going to get married this year. <laughs> <laughs> and then, but this year turned into a month or an hour. <laughs> it was just, I mean, it was happening so, and that's why it's a miracle yeah, because it, we can't even explain it. it. It really is hard to wrap our minds around it. <laughs> and we were going to try to do a video where we actually try to thoroughly explain it. And it's so hard. Yeah. Every, we can't every explain time. a miracle. Yeah, because what do you mind when she came to me when we were recording? Yeah. You know, and I say courting because that's that's what it was. Yes. Um, I, um, she actually told me, she said you. she wanted to get um after the proposal get married after the proposal so she said the day after and and in my mind i'm thinking it's like literally the day after you know but it was like you, you didn't want it to last long right right well, i didn't want it to last long the whole the, 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 the engagement. engagement oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no i want us to be so, so you so you really so you really felt when you said after did you really mean the next day yeah <laughs> I really meant, yeah, because, but I thought that was going to be something private, just me and Steph. Okay. All Not right. everyone else included. Okay. So you just felt like he's going to propose on this day and then y'all have a private ceremony mm -hmm. the next day. Just at the courthouse. Yeah. You know, whatever. Yeah. Like, let's get married. Yeah. We'll she said, I ain't time got time to wait. Well, was, we've been waiting long enough. It's been five months. It's been five months. <laughs> That's long enough. No, but I've been praying for my husband for years. You better talk about it. Yes. For like eight yes. years. So how old were you when you got married? I was 30. And you were 36? Mm -hmm. mm hmm And so um, so you felt like that was just a long time, them 30 years. Yes. <laughs> because, you know, you, we have our own plans. I know I it. told the Lord, I said, I want to be married by 25. Yep, 25 is always that number. I don't Everybody know what there. that is. It just, it's, just, it's somewhere in cyberspace <laughs> that you're supposed to be married by, by 25. 25. 25, have a kid by 27. Yep. Like, I just thought that that's yep. how yeah. my life was going to be. And at 30, it's because you've been so brainwashed that at 30, it starts getting downhill. Yeah. Uh, and, then, and then you got childbirth in, 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 in play and so it's a five year shot clock at that yes. and at 35 now yeah. you know it's so it's, it's all that stuff that we've been conditioned to believe and feel and it's real I mean ain't, ain't no lies about yeah. it and so you'd be like oh, I just turned 30 Yeah, I did a play years ago called um, By Any Means Necessary mm -hmm. and it was about these three women these three like overly uh, religious women mm. who concoct a scheme to get married by the age of 30 and they were all like 29 like mm. 29 oh in three gosh. months 29 five months it's funny teacher Campbell was in it and all that Shantae Moore um, um, Shar Jackson I mean it was, it, was, it was a dope dope play and uh, they concocted a scheme because they said at 30 like it, it goes downhill so they had to go rush the gun and so they was just trying to marry anybody um, and so you said you want to be married the next day and how'd you take that I was like fine <laughs> <laughs> That's how I knew this was because, my husband. Yeah, yeah. Because I, I, in my mind, she wanted to get married like at twenty five. Originally, mine was thirty. I yeah. wanted to get married at thirty, but yeah, I'm thirty six. So yeah, she she got her dream, you know, but really got my dream. There right? it is. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, you got her dream at, at your age. Mm -hmm. And so and so, you propose to her. People need to go to the YouTube channel to see uh, Stefan serenading his queen. Um, I'm going to drop a link to that, their, their, their channel on the video. Um, you proposed to her. You got married the next day. How was y'all? So how did the wedding come about? Was it like, was it just still the private courthouse thing or did it was family there? Or how did y'all end up deciding to uh, remix his wedding? <laughs> so um, at uh, Iman's mom's birthday, um, at, after her party, and almost during, that's, that's what made it so special. She literally pulled people aside 
and and said, you know, we need help with coordinating this. You know, I have a lot on my plate because she's she does a lot and she needed some help and I needed some help too in order to pull this off, proposing to her and getting married the next day. So we had two major events back to back. <laughs> so and these are life changing events, yeah. you know. <laughs> so it had to be right. So I had no clue they were planning. Yeah, yeah. So we went to the office and we all talked and we delegated roles and and responsibilities and we literally had Zoom calls once a week. You she know, didn't to know plan nothing this about out. this. Yeah. She didn't know any any of this. So um, in that moment, you know, literally during the planning, you know, we started generating these 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 project sheets and and things like that. So we had teams <laughs> like it was it was. Like it was like hitting it, hitting it quick, real yeah. quick. It was like we only had like a month, you know, to really plan this this wedding <laughs> and proposal. So I really wanted to to be responsible for the proposal. Yeah. Right. So with the wedding, you know, I, I pitched in here and there and she was involved to a certain extent, but she didn't know the date. Yeah. So I didn't know the date for the proposal. Or right. the wedding date. Right. So I'm just out here. <laughs> she, she was just out here. <laughs> like, I knew that it was going to happen before the year was out because I asked her. Yeah. I said, babe, I want to be married um, before, before Christmas. Before Christmas. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. I knew that he was going to make it happen. All right. And I did give her that, at least so she'll know, yeah. you know, to prepare. So she did go buy her her uh, dress, yeah. you know, to prepare for that. So, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, no, we literally coordinated this thing right away. And, you know, literally uh, it was the week of the proposal and I was asking God, like, Lord, give me a song, you know, to pre- present to her. And that's when God gave me, uh, come to me, you know, so that was the song that I sang to her when she came down. You know, and uh, the next day, like she knew, like after I proposed to her, she knew she get married next day. She was gonna get married. Oh, I love all that. I love all that. I love all that. Man, good lord! So y'all dropped this video on y'all YouTube channel. What made y'all jump into the YouTube space? Honestly, um, I felt compelled. Um, literally, I just I dropped the um, the come to me a video, just the song itself yeah. on YouTube, just to get it started. And literally, we we literally felt by our peers, some peers like you know, saying, hey, you guys should start a channel. You guys yeah. should start a channel. Definitely. Because we had been recording all those moments. Everybody knew. You know, they see all our videos. They seen our yeah. videos. And then they saw the video of me presenting her flowers. They saw the video of me coming to Memphis. God, mom. You know, God, mom, that video. They saw the video of, um, you know, her coming to Chicago. You know, and I and I, I did something very special when she came to Chicago. <laughs> What'd you do? Um, she had no idea. I had a few surprises for her. You know, um, I decided to shut down the jewelry store and take me ring and take her ring shopping. Yeah. So we had all those special moments recorded. And so my girlfriends were like, people need to see this kind of love like this. Yes. That's the reason why, man. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) That's the reason why I want y'all on here. Because y'all just be inspiring me. No. I'd be be like, see, I know I ain't crazy. Because what, because like I was, a lot of stuff that I envisioned, the stuff that I thought about, it's like y'all did exactly what I saw. Like Mm -hmm. that's what was so crazy. I was was like, this is, this is so cool. And of course y'all had conversations with the the woman that, that I was dating or whatnot. Cause of course she was like, now how how did y'all know that fast? Now how, cause she was just Mm -hmm. so skeptical about like, Mm -hmm. girl, how could you just trust somebody that quick? How could you do this or whatever? But again, her trauma, her trauma was, was talking. And right. um, and so it, it, it's cool. So I love um, I love that y'all were a part of that of mm-hmm. that journey or whatnot. Mm-hmm. And um, but it's, did y'all see my heartbreak video? Yes. Oh, we, oh, I man. was crying. Oh, yeah. Literally, she was in tears, and I was I was consoling her. You he almost had me in <laughs> tears. Like yeah, I'm like my bro, cry. man. I, I feel your pain, man. I feel you. Can you imagine and losing? Then, her? Can you imagine losing her at this stage? Man, literally, I, I don't know what I would do without her. How would you have felt if two months in you would have lost her? If she just said no and just walked away? Mm. I, I would have felt like I didn't give a fair shot at this. You know, I, I would feel like there was something left undone. Because when a man like turns on that gear of pursuit, it's like like genuinely, it's like all the way. Yep. Mm. You know, and I know you were there, man. <laughs> I, I I know it. That's why I, I felt because I've been there before too, where I've given my all. And it never, it didn't work out. 
You know, so I know what it means when it's lopsided. Yeah. You know, when someone's they're watching TV, I'm just using this as yeah. an example. Someone's hitting pause and then the other person's hitting uh, play. <laughs> 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 it's like, I'm here, but the other person's like, no. And, and, the TV off. The TV off. <laughs> turn the TV off. I'm like, TV off. <laughs> TV off. <laughs> it's like when the movie will never line up, the story will never will, line up if someone's ne- putting play and then pause. <laughs> You know, so every everyone wants to to have that love story. Yeah. Everybody wants that that God ordained fairy tale, but it's in the waiting. It is it is in the waiting. I'm telling you that every waiting every waiting season has an expiration. I want you to do this because we we at the end of this, this episode. I mm-hmm. want you to talk to that camera, and I want you and I'm gonna have both of y'all do this. I want you to talk to men, whatever guy lays in your heart. I want you to spend about a minute talking to men, and I want you to come back and you speak to women, whatever guy lays in your heart. Stefan, to my brothers out there, I want you to hear me real quick. Um, whenever you see a woman that you are very interested in. Pursue her fully with the right intentions. You know, a lot of times, you know, we all have different means of of why we've connected with a person, you know, and maybe God is showing you that she could be your wife or maybe have fear, trauma or something that you're dealing with. You know, just really look at it from a perspective like, is this God sent? You know, and and if you believe that God has sent her to you, pursue her with genuine intentions. And don't be afraid to those who are still waiting on you know, um, for God to see you, that person, know that every waiting period has an expiration date. It will ins- expire. Your time will come. And I would just want to encourage you. I speak that this will be your story. It may not happen in five months. Maybe it will happen in five months. We're not trying to put a time on what God can do, but just know that God will come through for you. Love it. Thank you, King. Queen, talk to your, talk to your sisters out there. Well, to the ladies, I just want to encourage you that God is faithful and just trust him with his timing because God makes everything beautiful in his timing. And like um, he does not forget our prayers. He hears every prayer that you've prayed and he's going to answer. It's just all on his time. So just be encouraged. Oh, boy. I love it. I love it. I love it. The offers came, dropped gems. Just hearing y'all's story is absolutely amazing. Uh, Thank y'all so much for pouring out. Um, I want this episode to be as long as it needed to be. So, so, cause, cause this, this, this is powerful. People mm-hmm. are going to go crazy. Make sure y'all go follow their or subscribe to their YouTube channel. Uh, that bad boy has grown to almost 25,000 subscribers in two months. I want y'all to understand that that is a move of God because it takes a long time to build on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Uh, y'all have a video on there that's over 400,000 views. Um, Again, God God is very intentional. I saw a video today where um, Lala was talking about um, people aren't getting married anymore. They don't see the value in it, all this type of stuff. And my heart grieved because, and I saw another video later on with this other lady saying that men lose in marriage. There's nothing that marriage affords men. And I just said, y'all just got it all wrong. Mm-hmm. Oh, y'all got it so wrong. Mm-hmm. And so I love how God's intentional on in taking y'all's love story to say, no, I'm about kingdom marriage. Mm-hmm. I'm about covenant. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, people may be dissuaded about what marriage uh, the value of marriage. But God said, no, this is the first institution that I created. Before I even created the church, I created marriage. Um, and so um, thank y'all. Thank y'all for being obedient, mm-hmm. for being obedient to the voice of God, because either one of y'all could have sabotaged this any step of the way. Y'all could have just said, nah, I'm tapping out. Could have. And that's why God gives us free will so we can decide whatever we want. Uh, and y'all were obedient and y'all had a community and a tribe of people that supported y'all. And even when it, it, times where, uh, did you ever get weary in your well-doing, Stefan? Did you ever want to give up? Man, so many times. So many times. I mean, I had been made fun of, you know, because of my single life. I wasn't the type of man that would always just date just a lot of women. Like, I wasn't da 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 Yeah. It was more of like a uh, like yeah. sniper kind of, yeah. if you will. Um, you know, so, Yeah. Yeah. Weariness. Yeah. I know what, what waiting and what it looks like. Like it yeah. feels like nothing is happening, nothing yeah. is tangible. You know, but when I tell you, it is so worth it. Yeah. 
And if God, if God remembered us, he will remember you. God remembered. Give it up for the offers, y'all. Ladarian thrusted suddenly into Child Protective Services in 2015. My nephew, black, a boy. The likelihood of being adopted outside of kinship, slim to none. Armani, 16 years old, black, a boy, with five years in the foster care system before I even knew his name. The likelihood of ever being adopted, yep, you guessed it, slim to none. While Ladarian and Armani were trying to survive and barely thrive in an overpopulated and underfunded foster care system, I was living my own life, doing well professionally. Having been a single father with a daughter who at that point was doing well in college, it was my time to live my life, right? Wrong. I felt unsettled, tireless, agitated. There are just too many of our black children stuck in ambiguity and in the limbo of the foster care system. In 2017, I legally adopted my nephew, Ladarian. Fast forward to 2019, I had no ties to this other young king, but I felt God instructed me to adopt him also, and I obeyed. Starting over with parenting should have been enough, right? Working with various foster care and adoption agencies to help bring awareness to the countless young black kings in the foster care system should have decreased my agitation, right? Joining the board of directors of Advantage Adoption, an organization that helps find permanent adoptive homes for children in foster care should have led to some type of resolve, right? No, not at all. None of it felt like I had done enough. I now realize that every one of those experiences was laying the fundamental foundation for my life's mission, Kingdom Royale. Kingdom Royale will be a luxury, state-of-the-art home for foster boys. Our first location will be in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. We will utilize the whole person approach that instills identity, empowers them to advocate for themselves, and enlightens them regarding new perspectives and limitless options that they thought were impossible. Though the young kings will attend the local public schools that are in proximity to Kingdom Royale, our at-home curriculum will broaden their worldview through participating in the arts, attending various cultural events, learning about and engaging in multifaceted discussions about current events and even relevant historical contexts, introducing them to gardening and landscaping and even caring for our animals on our farm and on-site stables. We just launched our startup capital campaign with the goal of raising $2.8 million. Now, why $2.8 million? Well, in 2017, I created a web series in which I performed random acts of kindness for targeting the homeless community. One of the most notable successes was that one of the videos went viral, garnering 28 million views. However, one of my biggest regrets is that I didn't raise a single dollar to help in implementing a more sustainable plan for the homeless community. So throughout the years, with much remorse, I reflected on not maximizing that moment. I knew if at that time, just 10% of the viewers donated $1, we would have raised at least $2.8 million that could have really established long-term support for the homeless community, or at least started a long-term initiative to do so. This is my do-over. This is our new beginning. Together, we can attack this at the root by specifically helping our homeless black boys who are already disproportionately represented in the American foster care system. I'm LaTerris R. Whitfield. I've been nominated for three regional Emmys documenting my work with the homeless as well as my personal adoption journey. Despite those accolades, the greatest award for me is truly providing the infrastructure for a transformed life. Visit KingdomRoyale.com for more details. Crown a king and make a donation today. Is it just me or was this episode absolutely impactful? I had to name it Miracle of Love because watching this episode, I know that's what your takeaway was. Like, how did God allow all these things to align and for it to happen so beautifully and seamlessly? Well, here's my favorite part of the podcast where I speak to my future wifey. Uh, this is the month of February and, you know, well, dear future wifey, February. Black History Month, Valentine's Day, you, 
loving your blackness, celebrating your queenship, honoring your strength and ability to be soft, praising your accomplishments and steadfast, unmovable faith to rise above adversity. Rest, queen. You've worked hard enough. I'm here. Rest, queen. Shed disappointments and unmet expectations. Look to the hills from which comes your help. Place your back against mine. We're in this thing together. Lean on me. I got you. Exhale. Melt into my arms and just rest, queen, your future hubby. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Dear Future Wifey podcast. Remember, be lit, live intentionally and transparently, and don't stop loving. Make sure to subscribe to our Dear Future Wifey YouTube channel. We're available on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and Stitcher. We welcome your support. Simply share our podcast with your friends and family.